all so much for joining us tonight. I'm Abby Manley. I'm the new Director of Development and Membership at the Matriots. Um, we're so excited to have you guys all here and to hear from you this evening. Um, we know the election's coming up and you guys are all busy, so appreciate you taking the time out of your day to speak with us. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. Wanted to remind everyone to please keep yourselves on mute unless you're speaking, just so we're sure that um, just so we're sure that we don't have any background noise and we can all hear everyone talk. And then also just to let you know that this is being recorded and streamed um, live on social media. So you all know that. So just wanna give a little bit of a short background of who we are, who the Matriots are. Um, we are a nonpartisan political organization that was created in 2017. And our goal is to endorse, encourage, and support women to run for office. The main, the bold goal is to have at least 50% of offices in Ohio to be held by women in 20, by 2028. So we're working hard to fulfill that goal and so glad that you all are running to help us do that. Um, so we really, to endorse the candidates that we do endorse, we have a rigorous process and that includes uh, the candidates applying, there's research, there's an interview, there's a review, because we really want to make sure we're a values-based organization and we really want to make sure that the endorsed candidates align with our values that really support women throughout the state. Um, and those values are economic empowerment, equity and independence, dominion over our bodies, access to education, and the ability to live and rear children in a healthy, safe, and prosperous environment. So we're all so excited that um, through your guys' applications and platforms that you really help us live those values, and it's a benefit to all of us in Ohio. So our, and our mission is to elect more Ohio women to public office who will promote a healthy economy which in which women can survive and prosper. So we are just, we're just so excited. So I want to take a few minutes and just set up the format for the event, just so we're clear of how, we're, how we'll do it. So at first we'll go around the room. Um, I'll just call on each of you to give your two minute stump speech so we can hear from each of you. Um, and then after that, our CEO, Emily Shriver, will moderate a Q&A so we can hear some more from all of you. Um, so what I'll do is I will just, I'll, I'll just go around the room um, and call on you because I know everyone's Zoom room looks a little different. So that'll be great. Um, we have a, a lot of great candidates here tonight. Um, this year, we're really, really excited that we were able to endorse 139 candidates across the state, which includes 72 communities in Ohio. Um, so this is all different kinds of offices. It runs from city council to mayor to city auditor. Um, to commissioners and more than half of those are our first time candidates. So we're just gonna give you all two minutes, introduce yourselves and tell us about your campaign. So let me get started here. So it looks like um, Beth Kowalski, you're first up on my, on my Zoom room. Great, thank you. Yes, my name is Beth Kowalsik and I am currently serving my first term as a Worthington City Council member. Um, and that has been uh, over four years. I'm the fourth woman ever to serve on city council and I'm running for reelection for another four years. I'm a licensed attorney with 28 years of experience in public interest advocacy and public service with local, state and federal government. And I'm committed to ensuring that Worthington is a, an inclusive and supportive and livable community for all. And the thing that I really see um, in our community is that people want to start their families here and ultimately stay here for the long term. And so one of my top priorities is advocating for age-friendly policies, including accessibility, availability of services, walkability, housing options. And I drafted the resolution that council passed to have Worthington join the National Network of Age-Friendly Communities. And now I'm really thrilled to be part of a group of community stakeholders that are working to make that vision a reality. Um, I've also made it my goal to keep people informed and to make myself accessible to residents. And I've been bringing more women to leadership positions with appointments on local boards, commissions, and task forces. Um, this Matriots endorsement means a lot to me because the reason I ran for city council was because I believed we needed more women in leadership roles in our community. And, you know, as I stated, there were only three women ever who had been elected to city council here. So I decided I needed to be the fourth. Um, during my first campaign four years ago, out of nine candidates, only two were women uh, for four seats. 
Uh, one was an incumbent and then myself, and we took the top two spots in the election. Um, four years later, we have four out of six candidates who are women for city council. And I'm so excited to see that. And they're all really amazing candidates. Um, and if four women win this year, we'll have an unprecedented majority of women on city council. So um, I'm really hopeful to see that happen. So thanks for having me tonight. Thank you so much. We are all rooting for you. That's that's so exciting. Um, next on the list is Kimberly Miner. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Great to see all of your beautiful faces. I'm really excited to, to be here. I see quite a few people that I recognize, so great to be here together. Um, I am running for city council in New Albany. And um, so there, there are a few things going on in New Albany, um, but I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. And so I um, am the CEO of Bombershoot, which is a consultancy firm that provides interim C-suite leadership, um, inclusive and equitable training and process development for companies and leaders and business development um, in the areas of branding, uh, retail and uh, consumer outreach. I've spent my career in branding, <laughs> fashion and retail leadership and that's what brought me here to work for L Brands. Um, and so living in New Albany, it's a beautiful community and it's extremely diverse in a very, uh, almost a mosaic of ways. We have international members of our community. We have different um, races and ethnicities and, and uh, LGBTQ, it's, it's just really a beautiful community. And that's why we moved here from New Jersey because I wanted to raise my children in a community that was reflective of the world. And what I found when I got here was that it was not inclusive. While it was diverse, diverse it was not inclusive. And um, very much to what Beth said, you know, our leadership the seats of power were very um, reflective of each other and not of the community. And so as a person who's very involved in the community, I'm, I'm on several boards and committees in the school as well as the, the community and someone who makes it a point of their life to um, support inclusive behaviors and practices. Um, it's very important to me to become a part of the seat of power um, because I want an inclusive community. I want inclusive economic development as we build and we are building very <laughs> aggressively do we have mbes at the table do we have wbes involved in the process um what does our leadership look like and is there transparency because just to give you a little update in new albany there has not been a contested city council race since 2009 and there's been a process in place where the they are select, a select few are put into seats on commissions and committees, mostly the zoning, because that's where the focus has been. It's been on business development and not on people and community development. And those people are then put into seats on city council. And so that's how it's been, but that's now how it's going to be, because now that I waved the flag and said, it's time for a change and it's time for someone new to um, get into one of those seats or two of those seats because uh, there's another candidate who isn't here, but who's also a woman who is pushing the boundaries of what was the norm in uh, New Albany. Um, we're going to change it so it'll never go back. And so as I continue to, to uh, work towards that goal, I also, in addition to inclus inclusivity, I want safe spaces for everyone, but especially for our teens and tweens, because if they don't have after school activity, they get in trouble and they, send, they, they find themselves in the middle of town. Um, and then also just to ensure that we continue to focus on sustainable growth. You know, my, my, the, if I, my arching goal is a sustainable and inclusive New Albany. And I'd like to be the leader um, on that charge. And, and I appreciate the Matriots because you stand for everything that is important to me. And the fact that you are focused on women and it's 
nonpartisan is especially important to me because I believe that people are more important than parties because people make it happen. And so this was my number one. <laughs> I really, I talked about this a lot. I just wanted the Matriots and I know Kim got tired of me, but I really wanted the Matriots endorsement um, because what you're doing is important and I, and I, and I believe in it and I want to be a part of it. So thank you. Great to be here with you all. Wonderful. We're so happy to have you as part of this. This is so exciting. Um, next up is Melanie Farkas. Hello. And hello to, there are several candidates here that I've been on other calls with or had coffee with. It's so exciting to see everybody here and, and all of us are obviously so proud to be Matrix candidates. And I, uh, similar to Kimberly, feel like I just bugged the crap out of the Matriots, you know, when I ran in 2019 and uh, this year. So I'm, um, I really did like scream when I got the news and uh, with happiness. So thanks for having me tonight. And uh, hello to anyone watching on uh, the Facebook live stream. Uh, my name is Melanie Farkas. I'm a mother of two uh, and corporate communication strategist. Um, and I live in Powell, Ohio. And I'm running for Liberty Township trustee, which is the township that Powell resides inside. Um, I ran, like I said, in 2019. Um, I did not win, but I did get a third of the vote in a three-way race. I always love to point that out because I'm, I'm so proud of it. And, um, you know, this year around, uh, this time around, I've been um, really excited over uh, the support, um, the community uh the um you know conversations i've been invited into and i'm just really excited um you know i've always been someone who wanted to be really involved in my community i'm you know i'm a girl scout leader a, a volunteer at my kids school I, i'm a sunday school teacher um in addition to raising two pretty amazing kids um and uh trying to somehow keep my house clean and my laundry clean um but I've always wanted to make a difference. And when I first moved here to Powell um, it, uh, in 2015, I realized pretty quickly that I didn't feel represented in local government. And um, in 2017, I, I formed a community group, which actually a young fledgling organization came to speak to our community group uh, and they decided to go with the name Matriots. Um, we, I think I, you know, was one of these community groups that kind of, uh, helped give feedback for, for the Matrix as it was being put together. Um, but this group we learned about, we set out to learn about, you know, um, local politics and, and the structure of local government. And I really started to recognize that's where I could make a difference and be um, someone who, a different voice than um, the folks that have been running uh, the township government and the city and county government for a long time. Um, so my hope is that with my um, communications experience, I can help bring real transparency to what's happening in our township, um, really impacts our lives. And a lot of people have a hard time uh, figuring out what is going on around here. Uh, and your average person should not have to do a public records request for that. So, um, you know, and I hope to, very similar to one, one candidate mentioned that we are growing like crazy in Delaware County. We're one of the fastest growing counties. Oh my God. Did you guys hear my kids screaming? <laughs> uh, we're one of the fastest growing counties in Ohio and, and the country, as a matter of fact. And uh, there really is not a great comprehensive plan on how to handle that growth. And that's the big issue around here. Um, we need to figure out how to grow and how to grow responsibly, um, how to ensure that we have the right infrastructure and that we're spending our tax dollars wisely. So um, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. I hope that was around two minutes and that is all. Great, thank you so much. Um, so the next person, Tiffany DeSilvia, if you could give us your two minute stump speech, that would be great. Hi everyone, I'm Tiffany De Silva. Um, I'm running for the Dublin School Board. Super excited to be here tonight. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm a licensed social worker. I'm a longtime uh, volunteer in the district and I'm a proud Dublin parent. I've lived in Dublin with my husband and three daughters for over 12 years. Um, I've been volunteering in the district for almost that entire time um, in the schools and at the district level. Like many residents here in Dublin, I moved here because 
One, it's a beautiful community, community just as uh, Kimberly mentioned about New Albany. Um, it has great schools and it's a very diverse community. I'm originally from Kentucky. Uh, my parents are from Southeastern Kentucky, which is coal mining country. And um, it's an area of very profound poverty. If you are familiar with that area, you know that. My mom was the first one of her siblings to go to college. And in fact, in, in the area where my parents grew up, it was not uncommon for um, people not to finish uh, high school or even make it to high school. So as I said, my mom was one of the first in her family to uh, go to college and she really instilled in me the importance of service and education. And this is something that I really carry with me today. It's why I volunteer in the schools. Um, at a very early age, I understood that kids need a supportive environment in order to thrive and they need resources. And uh, that's why I'm running for the school board. I wanna make sure that every student has the appropriate knowledge skills, resources, opportunities, and learning environment to succeed inside and outside of the classroom, and so that they're equipped to take on the challenges of our 21st century world. And as a longtime volunteer in the district and a Dublin parent and a licensed social worker, I understand the, the social and emotional needs of our students, and I also understand how policy affects our students, and I want to bring that understanding to the school board with me. That's a perspective that I feel is missing right now. And I also want to increase community engagement and bring better communication across the board in our district. I believe that um, together, if we work together, uh, we can create a district where all students are welcome, where all students feel affirmed and supported and they're prepared to uh, achieve their highest potential when they when they leave our district. And I look forward to continue, continuing to advocate for our students and supporting our teachers and being a voice, voice for all of our families, especially um, the people who aren't, aren't always heard. And I just wanna thank the Matriots for this opportunity and for the endorsement. It was really important to me to get the Matriots endorsement and I'm really honored to have it because um, your values align with my values and. And uh, I really appreciate that you empower women and that you do also value education. So thank you. And I, I look forward to the conversation tonight. Thanks, Tiffany. Okay, Lindsay Gillis, your two minutes are, are good to go. Hi, my name is Lindsay Gillis. I am running for Dublin School Board. Um, I'm a first time candidate. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, there are so many brilliant women and faces I recognize. So thank you so much for having me. I greatly respect so many of you. So it's so great to see you guys on Zoom. Um, I'm running for Dublin School Board. Um, after devoting well over 12 years in this district, I feel like I have learned it from the inside out, along with um, my experience as a realtor and just bringing my lived experience as a woman of color who was raised in the suburbs of Worthington, Ohio, I feel like I really am a voice that our district needs at this time. We have gone through um, a lot of growth and a lot of changes, and we have one woman on the school board. We're just not representing um, our community on the school board at all. And um, I have three daughters in the district. Um, it has been an honor to receive your endorsement because uh, my values align with your values. Uh, my mom taught me to be the change and that is what I'm doing by running for school board. Um, women empower women and I truly believe that. And I believe that my goals are to bring unity to our district, which is very needed. Um, accessibility to our board members being more than an inbox, um, working with our teachers and students, really uniting our teachers union. Uh, when we put our teachers first, we're putting our students first. Um, just really bringing my lived experience. Um, it's been, gosh, we have 20 days and it's been a really big journey. And I think my thoughts are super jumbled tonight. Um, but I'm just really hoping to work with Tiffany De Silva and bring our knowledge of what we have in this district and our experience as moms 
and leaders in our community to really advocate for these students as a whole um, and represent them all. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you for your endorsement. It was a pinch me moment um, and one that I will never forget. And it was exciting to share with my daughters. I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Melanie Houston, you're up. You're up. It's lovely to be with you all this evening and to hear your um, your remarks and your stump speeches. And thank you, Matriots and uh, Emily and the whole Matriots team for the endorsement, which I fully agree is a, is a complete honor um, to, to be able to uh, share that with my supporters and my voters in my community. So my name is Melanie Houston and I'm running for re-election for Grandview Heights City Council. And a little about me, I moved to Grandview Heights in 2011 with my husband, and we have two kids, Quinn and Mac, who are eight and three, and um, we are all active members in our community. I also have dedicated my career to fighting for air, land, and water for Ohioans through my work for the Ohio, Ohio Environmental Council, where I currently serve as the drinking water director. So I, my story is that I first ran for council in 2017, wanting to see more women in leadership in our community, and then also hoping to bring my environmental experience and perspective to council. At the time I was running, there were actually three Steves on council and only two women. Uh, and I'm, but I'm happy to say after running a robust campaign in 2017, I, I won a seat on council and I was actually the, the second uh, top vote getter. And in my first term on council, I had some really clear goals in mind, and I believe I've been able to deliver on uh, many of those. Um, to speak a little bit to um, issues which uh, Matriots cares dearly about, uh, immediately in, in 2018, at the top of my term, I began to educate my council colleagues and the administration on the importance of paid family leave for our city employees. I argued the policy would help advance gender equity, it would support families and infant health, and would also improve our city's ability to um, both attract and retain talent. And so, and due in large part to that advocacy, the administration formulated the first ever paid leave policy for um, our, our police, our fire, and our non-uniform employees through an update to the city um, personnel policy in, in 2020 really proud of that and hope to see that policy continue to, to be strengthened. I also have advocated for our city to explore equity co coaching and to find avenues to intentionally attract and retain more women and people of color in our city staff and on our police and fire force, forces. And then in 2020, in the, in the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd, I championed the Grandview Heights resolution declaring racism as a public health crisis and led important community conversations on racial justice. Um, in addition to those uh, things, I've also been a champion at our local um, government uh, on environment and sustainability. I've supported economic development projects which have cleaned up polluted land and also added to our tax base. And I've worked with our current council president to pass legislation, uh, helping residents to more easily undertake energy efficiency projects and solar projects on their home homes. And then finally, in 2019, I had the privilege to work with our state representative, Kristen Boggs, to bring a, um, to get a state grant uh, award of $150,000 to bring a future walking and biking trail to our community. And so I'm really running for re-election, not only because I've loved this job and serving the community, but because I want to continue to make us a leader in sustainability and in, in inclusivity in our community. And um, just thank you all for your time tonight. And again, thank you for the endorsement. Thanks so much, Melanie. Up next is Michelle Hoyle. I hate Zoom. I'm tired of it. We've been doing it for two years now, and I so much wish we were all in the same room. But nonetheless, it's lovely to be with you tonight. I'm Michelle Hoyle, and I am running for re-election to Upper Arlington City Council. Like many of you, um, I well, maybe not like many of you, but the 2016 election spurred me to realize that I had to be part of the next generation of elected officials, in part because I have two granddaughters and I didn't want them to believe that all government was like what they were seeing at the national level. 
I have a long career in municipal finance, first with the city of Columbus and then with the city of Dublin. And then when I retired, I started doing volunteer work for my own city. So I first was the chair of our cultural arts commission and then co-chaired our first citizens financial review task force, which let me learn an awful lot about Upper Arlington. Um, you all may know Upper Arlington is one of our older inner ring suburbs. We are landlocked. We cannot, we have no land and we have about less than 5% of our land that generates all the revenue that supports all the services we provide for our city. So, so much of what we have been doing in the last four years when, well, first of all, when I ran in 2017, we had just come off a very contentious recall election. So those of us who ran in 2017 said, we're gonna lower the temperature. We're gonna slow things down. We're gonna be more open, more engaged with the community. And we are not going to, we are going to make sure that our community feels heard, that our community feels part of the process. And that our community is once again, the kind of place where people feel like we are not divided anymore. And I think we've accomplished that. Um, one of the things we all agreed we needed was to be more civil and lower the temperature in the room. And I think it, we've, we've really worked hard on that. And then um, this recent year, we just appointed our first community relations committee because one of the things that we want Upper Arlington to be is a more open, welcoming and inclusive community. So we're really working hard to, in some respects, break down some of the barriers that I think a lot of people see to a community like ours that is small and somewhat encapsulated, the bubble we call it. We're trying to break the bubble right open so that everybody feels at home in our community. Um, like I said, my background is in public finance. I spent 30, almost 35 years working for two different cities. So I believe if it's in the budget, it's gonna happen. So every year when we put our budget together, my goal is to make sure that we are including those things that are that are our residents' priorities. Um, like I said, we recently passed let's, we recently passed a resolution by almost 80% of our community with a public vote to build a community center, which has been something that people have been trying to do for almost 30 years in our community. So I'm very proud of that accomplishment. Um, but like I said, we also are trying to make our community a more warm and welcoming place. So I'm hoping to serve another term. We are term limited, so I will only get one more term. So hopefully I can be there for four more years and continue and finish the work that we've started. Um, we only have two women on our council out of seven. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, another woman at least will join me as one of our seven council members. So at least we're three of seven, which will move us forward. And the other last thing I wanted to say was like Kathy Adams, I started my day at 7.15 this morning at the uh, Upper Arlington Tri-Village Rotary. Then we went to the Northwest Realtors. So if I look a little fuzzy around the edges, it's just because I've, it's been a long day, but I appreciate so much the Matriarch's endorsement because this shows me women helping women. And I think women leaders, women, women are better at collaborating and working together. So the more women we can elect, the more we can make this a more collaborative government and take away some of the divisiveness that we're seeing right now. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for supporting one another. And I certainly hope that we can all help one another become elected or reelected in November. Thanks. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, Kaylee, Kaylee Padova, the next two minutes are yours. Thank you so much. Um, it's great being here with all of you. Um, a lot of familiar faces and um, some that I've just seen on Matriot's sites and things like that. So um, it's great to be in the room with you. Um, I am running for Gahanna City Council for Ward 3. Um, I first came to Gahanna in college for a serving job where I met my now husband. Um, we purchased our first home here and just um, in August, we actually started our family here and I um, had my little baby girl. So um, it has been a crazy experience running for office while pregnant and with a now a newborn, but um, definitely, uh, definitely worth it so far. Um, I was canvassing for issue 12 um, here in Gahanna a few years ago and kept hearing a message of distrust towards our city council. Um, 
there were multiple people who actually were okay paying more taxes to a different city to avoid giving our city more money to squander. Um, that really hit home. I did not want to live in a place where people didn't, the distrust was so bad that they didn't even want to invest in their own city. Um, so I started thinking about running for office and was encouraged by some other people to do so. Um, found out that the incumbent has um, not even had anybody uh, run against him for the last um, eight years. So he's been running unopposed. Um, so if nothing else, I'm at least giving Ward 3 a choice this year. Um, I now serve as the food pantry manager at Gahanna Residence in Need. So I'm very visible in the community and really hope to bridge the communication barrier between city council and the residents here in Gahanna. So um, like many of you have said, I'm very honored to have the Matriots endorsement. Um, as soon as I found out about the Matriots as a group, I was very excited to join and become a member. Um, and so it was very nice to receive their endorsement and um, be part of this crew here. Great, thank you so much, Kaylee. Okay, up next is Latoya Dadell Berger. I think you're still muted, Latoya. We can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me great. now? Yep, there you are. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, hi, my name is Latoya Dadell Berger, and I am running for Groveport Madison Local Schools Board of Education. I was appointed appointed last July um, to fulfill a vacancy that's ending this year. So I'm running for a full term this year. This is my first candidacy, but not the first time running a campaign. It's different being the candidate. So like everyone else here, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Matriarchs, for the endorsement, which happened to be on my birthday when you emailed me that I got it. So it's like the best birthday present ever. <laughs> I call my mommy screaming, but yes, yeah, so thank you so much for that because my values align with yours. Um, I bring leadership, innovation, and service to the Board of Education here in Groveport Madison Schools. I am the second African American to ever serve on the Board of Education for Groveport Madison, where we serve about 45% of our population are African American students. Um, I'm an Army veteran, proudly served 11 years, uh, one tour to Operation Iraqi Freedom to Kuwait in 04 to 05 background in marketing, politi uh, political campaign management, um, human resource management, and of course, a nonprofit. So serve on several boards. Uh, Columbus Gospel Fest is one um, where we're out in the community and connecting with others. I look forward to continuing my service this November, hopefully. Um, by bringing additional programs and diversity to the group, one big thing that I found is that we don't we we can engage our fam our community a little bit more. So one of my platforms is board to community and parent to parent. As I'm currently the only parent that is serving on my school board as well. Uh, so those are two main platforms as well as equitable education to our students and families. So. I am looking forward to uh, November. I have a lot of stuff written, but I just kind of spoke from the heart now. So I won't even prolong, but I know that I'm going to um, just give them the best that I can. There are six of us running. Um, there are several females. So I will say that our board definitely has females on our board, but the diversity as far as people of color is missing to be that voice. And that, that representation is not there. And I'm honored to provide that representation on the Goport Madison Schools Board of Education. So thank you for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, up next is Karen Millard. Hi, everybody. My name is Carrie Millard. It's so nice to see you. Um, I am a first time candidate I'm running for Plain Township trustee. I think is it Melanie, you're also running for a township trustee. So yay. Um, it was Matriots who had done research to um, find that only 6% of trustees in the state of Ohio are women. So Melanie, we're, we're going to make some headway. Um, again, I'm a first time candidate. Plain Township is in, also in New Albany. So I'm out here with Kimberly Minor and our friends in this part of, of town. My professional life, my entire career has been in the nonprofit sector. So I'm a small business owner. I own a nonprofit consulting firm and uh, we just celebrated our 18th anniversary last month. 
And prior to being a small business owner, I worked for nonprofits, everything from a box office manager and PR coordinator to an executive director. So my heart is full of service. It's just in my DNA. I decided to enter public service and run for office because the last six years have just been crazy town. And I decided I can just sit on the sidelines and continue to complain about the dysfunction or I can dive in and try to make a difference. And that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, as Kimberly mentioned about not having contested elections at New Albany City Council, Plain Township has not had contested elections in a long time either. So I'm going up against two long serving incumbents and I hope to make a difference. Uh, the big difference that I hope to make is with our fire and ERM, EMS department. So Plain Township is primarily fire, the pool and parks, the cemetery and some roads. Um, our fire and EMS division needs more investment as this community has grown, so too does uh, our, the investment we need in that um, area of service, which is life safety. Um, so I'm, I've got all sorts of ideas of what I want to do for the community. And for those of you on the Zoom who have, are running for re-election and you're saying, and then I did this, and then, then I did this, I'm just sitting here quietly thinking to myself, I can't wait, hopefully in four years, to be able to say I'm running for re-election and I did this and I did this. So my heart is full with gratitude for all of you for sharing your story with us tonight. I'm so grateful to the Matriots. I am a founding member of the Matriots. I sat on the first finance committee with Sharon Steele and Loanne Crane many, many years ago at Lindy's when Matriots was just becoming a thing. So the, to be an endorsed candidate is just really rewarding and, and inspiring. So thank you all. And I look forward to seeing all of us win in three weeks. Thank you so much, Carrie. Okay, last but not least is Kathy Adams. Hello, thank you so much. Uh, I am also in Upper Arlington with Michelle, where she mentioned we only have two out of our seven city council members are women right now. I have never run for office before. This is my first time. Uh, I have two children in the schools here and I come from a long line of strong women. So the Matriots endorsement was very meaningful to me. That's an important part of my identity. Um, my mother was a biochemist at Ohio State and she talks about when she was coming up, how her brother told her she should be a secretary and her friends were getting married and having children out of high school. So she raised me to have my own career and I am a lawyer. Um, when I was in college, I worked in a refugee office and I was going to school and I, I got a job as a case manager uh, for a resettlement program of some refugees from Cuba to find them jobs and housing and English classes. And that really inspired me to go to law school to have an impact at a higher level. I don't always share that story though, because I've been told that just the fact of being a woman, people assume that you're a caregiver and want to have a social impact and that kind of thing. Um, so I do focus on my credentials. I work for the state of Ohio and I've been a uh, state lawyer for 15 years and I take public service very seriously. I have chosen that for my career. I am in the finance section of my office, so I also take it seriously to be a fiscal watchdog of state taxpayer dollars. And in my job, I work on large construction projects, development projects, IT projects, so I think I have really relevant qualifications. Um, part of what I do in my job also is working on some policies. And at the state level, we have programs for minority-owned businesses. Now we have even more programs for women-owned businesses and veteran-owned businesses. And so last summer, I started asking questions and I actually did a public records request for the city of Upper Arlington to find out about what our policies were here. And there was nothing at that time for our purchasing or our hiring or our economic development. And that was one of the things that inspired me to want to run. I am very passionate about those issues. So on my own time, I came up with a PowerPoint presentation with ideas about how the city could improve in those areas. And I really would like to have a seat at the table to implement them. Um, 
I see several ladies here that I know that have inspired me and been a great uh, support to me and showed up for me. And that is so meaningful. Uh, earlier in my career, I practiced in labor law, which was very male dominated. And even now I'm sometimes in spaces, especially when I'm working on the construction area of my practice um, where I am. It's not uncommon that I am mansplained um, or have people, uh, males borrow my ideas and quote them as my own. And it's just always been really reaffirming um, and energizing to be, be in this space. It means a lot to me. Um, another important part of my identity to me is that I am a member of the LGBTQ community and I would be the first ever LGBTQ representative on our city council. So I really want to advocate for inclusivity from a bunch of different angles. Um, and again, I'm honored and really appreciate your support. Wonderful, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Okay, so next um, is, you guys have, have all been so great, this is wonderful. So we are going to move on to the Q&A session. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to the Matriot CEO, Emily Shriver. Hi everyone, that was incredibly inspiring and um, and I know that our community is excited to hear from you directly about why you're running and, um, and about your platform issues. I wanna tell you that um, we have loved hearing everything you had to say this evening, but we are also coming up you know, we, I said it would go until six. Let's give it, give me some grace and let's go till 6.15 because I want to get a Q&A. If you have to leave, drop me a little note um, in the chat that says, Emily, I need to go right at six and I'll be sure to make sure that I, I say farewell to you. But I want to give us time to explore with you all just a few questions. Um, and, and this has been an overwhelming response. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And um, so my first question, um, right out the gate, you know, Lindsay led us to talk first about, I love women who empower women. That was something that you said um, in, your, in your overview. And Michelle said something similar as well, and that women lift each other up and we create a community. I'm, I'm really interested, um, um, Melanie Farkas, from you, how, have, um, how has partnering with women in the community um, through this campaign been helpful to you? You know, I mentioned earlier that I created a community group in 2017 and we learned, you know, about local politics, how, you know, bills go through the state house. We learned um, about community organizations that were just starting like the Matriots and some other stuff. And uh, right away, the people involved were all women. And in fact, I, I like to note that of, of the people in this kind of initial group, there's me who's run for office once and I'm running again. Uh, there is uh, a certain Beth Liston, who some of you may recognize. Uh, we like to brag. We were the first people she told that she wanted to run for office, but may, she probably told her family first. Um, Heather Carr, who's on policy council, is in that group. And then um, Christina Drummond, who's running for policy council this year, is in that group. And I think it was interesting to me in this group to see all of these women we have the passion and the drive to just get it done. And uh, that we, a lot of us had an awakening in, uh, you know, 2016, 2017. And so I have, I have found myself, um, you know, continuing to work with women um, in, uh, you know, community efforts and in um, my campaign, you know, um, and engaging with, with so many women who are offering incredible skills and expertise and uh, also, you know, shoulders to cry on when things are getting stressed and uh, sometimes dropping dinner off at my house when uh, things are really insane. So um, it, it's amazing uh, how we rally around and support one another. I love it. And I, in the, in the, in the zoom screen, I see Carrie also nodding vigorously along with this. You've Actually, Carrie, for those who are at home and on the Facebook and can't see us, Carrie has been just cheering everybody along in our chat, um, saying, you go, this is amazing, do more of this. Carrie, what kinds of things have been, um, where have you seen partnerships or relied on partnerships with women um, as you've been working through this campaign? 
Yeah, well, thank you so much. And I mean, I am, um, I just, I feel like a cheerleader over here. <laughs> just like, go ladies, go. Um, so someone said before that they stand on the shoulders of the strong women who've come before them and someone ref referenced their mother. Um, you know, I'm first generation college. You know, my mom was the daughter of immigrants. And so here I am sitting here as a small business owner and a candidate for election and my heart is just full. Um, and all along the way, it has been women who have, um, as a small business owner, when I wanted to start my company 18 years ago, it was women who cheered me on. And in my journey of discernment to decide if I'm going to run for office, it was women who cheered me on. And as I'm out campaigning, I'm going door to door with Kimberly Miner and I'm knocking on doors with Precious Singo. And, and you know, there are women on, on the Zoom that I've had phone calls with when I said, am I crazy to do this? So um, it really has been the most heartwarming um, experience. Uh, I had a, a text message this morning from another woman who said, I've just talked about your campaign with these other women and you're gonna be getting some donations. So. It has really just been the most uplifting and positive experience. And, you know, win, lose, or draw in three weeks on election day, I will be a better person for having to go through this journey. And it really has been um, on the shoulders of other women and because of the outstretched arms of other women that I've been able to get this far. And I'm just so inspired by it at all. Hey, um I feel as the new CEO here, I feel that very strongly that women are lifting, lifting each other up. Um, and in lifting one of our own up, I know Latoya, you have to run to a school board, but you have to go do the job of the place. Um, so I, I want to give you, I have a question for you um, before you head out. If you have just a couple minutes left, I would, I'm really interested in the fact you and a number of other people um, talked about that that you're out there kind of stomping the pavement. You've actually been in this seat before, but this is your first time running for the office. Can, can you tell us a little bit about um, what makes that sort of a unique perspective or what you're seeing um, from having to run for a seat that's already yours um, in, for the first time? Is there anything unique about that? Yeah, it's very unique, actually, because I'm one of those type of people that I'm always behind the scenes. I'm the cheerleader like Carrie. So I'm going to push you. I'm going to be at everything. I'm going to build your network. I'm going to build your street team. But when it came time for me, I think as women, at least for me, I'm hard on myself, uh, somewhat afraid to ask. Um, I think having the interview with the Matriarch, believe it or not, was like my little boost of confidence. Like, man, I really can do this. Um, everyone was so welcoming and helpful. So it kind of made me change my own mindset, I would say. And I reset and said, okay, you've got this. You've done this before. But it was hard because, you know, we are nur normally nurturers. So we're quick to do something for someone else and find it harder to do stuff for ourselves. So I love this group for that kind of support. Um, I think the other big thing for me that was a struggle was just the ask you know, asking anybody anything, to be honest, um, for help, support. But I'm at the point, we're at the point now, like, I don't have time to even think about what, you know, what, what I look like, how do I feel about it? Listen, are you in or out kind of situation at this point in the game? Um, and then seeing all these lovely ladies tonight once again was like, okay, okay, you got this, you got this, you're not alone. This was, if anything, the panel is more a reminder of why we do what we do um, and a reminder to keep going and not just check out, you know, because sometimes we're like, okay, I quit today, but yet you still keep going. <laughs> Um, the fight or flight mentality. But for me, I think that's the biggest unique thing, um, being able to do it for everyone else, but not yourself. So I have to be honest and transparent and say that, but I'm, I'm past it now. Thanks for, thank you for that. I think that's a, that's a dose of wisdom we can probably all take tonight, take tonight home with us. Um, I'm going to take just a real quick break from asking questions because I see a new face in our Zoom room. Oh, bye, LaToya. Um, I see a new face in our Zoom room. Vanessa Hayes-Williams is here from Pickerington. I want to give you the chance to introduce yourself to us. Can you tell us just in, a, you know, just two minutes or so, a little bit about yourself, and then I'll hop back into the, the question and answer. Thank you so much for that opportunity and thank you all for getting me in and being a part of this group, um, or should I say this team. 
Um, my name, as she said, is Vanessa Haynes Williams, and I am running for the Pickerington Local School Board. Um, I am the mother to four children, uh, three that have already graduated from our school system, one who is attending UC, and the other two who have graduated from college, and then we have one who is a freshman um, at one of our, our local uh, high schools. Um, I am a wife to Carl G. Williams, um, as well as, and just as of today, started writing um, from my doctoral um, program um, in education, leadership, and management. Um, I've had the privilege of serving um, as a educator, um, as a, uh, a, an adult probation officer. I have worked in juvenile corrections, and it all has brought me um, to this point of always being able to serve but want to do something a little bit deeper. Um, I have an opportunity here uh, to speak on behalf of our community and our neighbors and our students in a, in a level and in a, on, a, on a level and in a voice that is unusual on our board. Um, I am really big on uh, research evidence um, practices. Um, and I think because of the experiences that I have had um, as in program management um, and compliance um, and within our education, I can speak that common language um, to not only soothe some of the souls within our community to become unrest, but also to help us figure out we need stronger structures and processes um, in our schools. Um, I think Pickerington is doing a wonderful um, job in, in graduating our students, but as my pathways will um, talk about, we need to do a stronger job at career pathways and developing uh, meeting students where they are in their learning and hopefully one day becoming productive community um, citizens. Um, so I'm looking forward uh, to this continued work. Um, I thank the Matriots for their support. Um, and their encouragement. I was just listening uh, to the last um, conversations. And I think for me, it has been uh, the self-talk. Um, one of the things I've learned as a social and emotional coach is that resilience is a great tool that we can teach our students and teach our children in life. And what I have learned is that resilience kind of tapped in during this point in my life. I needed to do a lot of self-talk, like get up. Just like today, I was out canvassing and I was like, walk one more block and walk, I'm walking one more block led me to talk to two or three more people. I think the endorsement helps me to understand that there is a possibility for that shared vision um, and the support of individuals in my community to do that. So I wanna thank you all again for this opportunity and thank you um, even more for an opportunity for tonight to join you. We are very glad you're here with us tonight and thank you for, for hopping in. Um, and when I threw the question at you, just being ready to grab it and, and take a two minute stump speech, that's, uh, that is a real skill. Um, and one of the things that, that you said, Vanessa, that I wanna pose to both Melody Houston and to Michelle Hoyle, um, you talked about this negative self-talk that happens inside our head um, when we're a candidate, when we're running for office, but I'm sure that also happens once you get up on the dais. So I'm interested in hearing from um, Melanie and Michelle. I'll go with Melanie first, because you're on the left of my screen, and then Michelle. Um, some of the ways that you combat, now that you're in office, how you combat that negative self-talk if it happens, maybe it doesn't happen to you and it's just all me and Vanessa, but I, I kind of doubt it. No, I think it happens to everyone. And I actually took um, like a women's leadership training program this past summer and we spent a little bit of time on imposter syndrome. And so just, just knowing a little bit more about that, that it's real, that a lot of people you know, deal with it. I mean, anyone who is in a space where they are underrepresented, right? There aren't as many folks that look like them. Uh, that tends to be one of the factors, right? That that leads to imposter syndrome. And um, but also knowing that it's something that you can um, take on, right? Head head on and and overcome. And that there's some tools and strategies for that. So, I think. Um, you know, I, I'll say a couple things. There is just a learning curve. So giving yourself grace to know that everyone that starts out in this role has a learning curve. And I think it's a pretty steep one for uh, office, whether it's local, state, federal level. Um, so give yourself grace and know that anyone in that role um, is going to need to take some time to get comfortable with it, to understand what your authority is, what your levels levers are, 
for action, um, but you can start talking about the things that are important to you, even if you don't know what the policy vehicle might be or whether it's an administrative action or a council action. Um, and I think asking a lot of questions. So one of the tools that I use is just, I like to ask a lot of clarifying questions, a lot of questions out of curiosity. And what I find is that my colleagues, I think gain from that too. They might not be as apt and quick to ask those questions, but I've, I've come to understand that a lot of times they don't answer to the questions. They're just not maybe as willing to ask them as I am. So I try to be really active in that space of asking clarifying questions to learn more and um, sort of using it to propel, you know, my knowledge and my effectiveness. I was nodding through a lot of what you said, because I think the two things that you learn is no matter how many city council meetings you've attended or how many you've watched, how many you've it's not the same as being out there on the day. And I, like you, um, I just do a lot of homework. I, I, I over prepare. I am not a natural public speaker. I'm sure you can tell because I'm not that comfortable just extemporizing. So I prepare. I do my homework. I ask a lot of questions ahead of time. And frequently I will say, you know, this is a question I'm going to ask again from the dais because I think the rest of my colleagues need to hear this. So I guess to me, it's just homework, homework, homework because the better prepared I am, the more comfortable I am. And I wanna tell you something else. I am the shortest member of our city council. So I take a pillow and I sit on a pillow so that I don't look like the shortest person up there because I'm surrounded by guys and they're mostly over like 5'11 to six feet tall. So I try to make myself fill the same space as they do. And I think that psychologically it helps me feel like, you know, I am not the short girl in the room. But um, I just think preparation and give yourself the opportunity to learn, learn from your colleagues and ask questions. And mom as a school teacher has taught me this dumb question. Now I'd argue there are, having heard them from both sides of the dais, but, dais, but that being said, prepare, study, learn, and ask a lot of questions. I think both, all of those tips are really important just kind of in our daily lives. Um, so I, I was actually writing some of them down to make sure that I, you know, I'm in a learning curve. And so um, I appreciate you guys giving this kind of guidance to us. Um, and one of the things, Michelle, that you said uh, triggered a, a, a question for me that I would, that I want to uh, point towards Kimberly Minor and Kaylee Padova. Both of you talked about the fact that you're running in races where um, the individuals have generally been sort of unopposed, right? It's been uncontested in New Albany. Um, a slate has run before. Kaylee, for you, the individual who you're running against has been sitting in that seat for a very long time. So can you give us a little bit of um, insight on, on any kind of strategies that you use to address um, these kinds of races where there hasn't been a lot of turnover, when you don't actually know exactly how much it takes to run a race because they haven't been running them the same way, um, where you're not sure exactly which doors to knock on. What, what kinds of strategies have you employed um, with this some of this lack of, of data exactly? So I, I think, if you don't mind, Kaylee, I'll jump in. Um, you know, what I found was to Melanie, uh, to Melanie's point about asking questions, right? I started talking to members of the community. And what I found was there's a lack of knowledge. And so most people know about national candidates. They know about the presidential race. There were members of the community who didn't even know there was a city council. And these, I mean, these are really, <laughs> high performing people in the community, but they had no idea because I, I, I believe in large part it was purposeful because if you don't make waves, people don't question things and then you can do what you want to do. And so my strategy in being a first time candidate was really to make sure, you know, I really drew on my experience of being a customer advocate and a brand advocate. So I'm a brand and my community is my customer. And how do I connect with a customer? I talk to them, right? And so it's grassroots and, and you reach across and you ask questions. And um, 
you know, a lot of what we've done with my campaign has really been about having the right people around me who are members of the community, have been a part of the community for a long time. And quite honestly, even though it's been uncontested, even when it was contested, it was kind of contested, kind of. And so what, what we've done, because it's not traditional um, political, I've never been to lead, I've never taken a class, you know, I'm in a group, but um, it's been different. And so it's made them actually come to us because this is new to them. They've never had to campaign. And so we've kind of flipped it, right? We were just disruptive in a positive way so that we're educating the community on what democracy really should be. You know, it's not just about the, you know, the presidential elections. We are answering questions about how you vote, right? What does it mean? Well, it's not just one seat. There are four seats, there are five candidates, there are three incumbents. They've been in there since 2009. This is, you know, these are the issues. Um, and so I, I think it was a great opportunity to really show the community who I am and, and how important it was to be out there. And, and to your question about whose door to knock on, all of them, <laughs> all of them. Hi, I'm Kimberly Miner and I'm running for city council. Nice to meet you. Tell me what's important to you. So that's that's my that's been my strategy. <laughs> I love it, Kaylee. So similarly to what Kimberly was saying, um, there has been a lot of uh, knocking on doors and kind of educating people because um, you know my opponent hasn't had to campaign, um, so they haven't had a lot of people knocking on their doors and telling them about ward races. So especially since my race is a ward race, a lot of people in my ward don't even know that we have four different wards and um, that there's somebody representing just our ward. Um, so it's kind of educating people on what's going on, but also just like the basics of, you know, how many wards there are, when, you know, how long the terms are, things like that. Um, as far as campaigning and knocking on doors, same or knocking on all the doors, <laughs> all of them, um, you know, local elections, there are a lot of things that cross party lines. And um, I try to talk to everybody. And I've had a lot of success where um, one man actually gave me my literature back as soon as he asked me my party. And I talked to him a little bit more. And then by the end of the conversation asked if he could get that piece back so he could look into me a little more. So there are definitely um, areas where we can come together on a local level. And I hope that I'm able to do that, um, not only just knocking doors, but hopefully as um, being an elected member on council. I, just, I wanna add just briefly in New Albany, in addition to um, you know being new to it, I look different than everyone else, <laughs> right? So um, in that space of city council, uh, and that's been something to overcome because there've been the whisper campaigns. But if you're just, to your point, Kayla, you know, you give it back to them and you give them the information that, so that they can just look at you and find out what you're, what you're about and not what you look like, you, you, I've turned some people around in that way also, so. And kind of drawing off of that just a little bit, we know that this is a, I'm not gonna shock anybody on the Zoom screen by saying that this is a politically charged environment in which to campaign. Um, and um, I mean, I guess if you are shocked, you can you can say in the chat, Emily, that's the most surprising thing you've said all evening. Um, but I know Tiffany and Vanessa, you're both running for school board races um, in your respective areas. School board is, um, is a really interesting thing to run for right now. And so how are you able to, um, how are you able to take your message out there into a politically charged environment when you're knocking on doors or out in, um, out in the, in the community talking with people, how are you able to elevate sort of above some of that politically charged uh, motivations and talk about your key stances? What, what tactics do you employ? Um, Tiffany, I see you first on my screen. So if you don't mind there. 
Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's a great question. And it, it's it's been an interesting uh, campaign. Just there's, like you said, it is uh, very, very politically charged, which I expected it, but not to this degree around certain issues. Um, and some of, I know, I know you're aware of critical race theory and all of that and all of those questions. And I think the best strategy that I have found is to one, listen and, and hear what people are saying, um, but also to engage them in a conversation because I have found that um, a lot of this stems from misinformation or disinformation or not really understanding what it is that um, what they're hearing. So a lot of times if you can engage them in a conversation, then they they can at least, you know, gain some kind of understanding. Now there are some people where <laughs> that's not gonna work. So you do need to understand that there are some people who are very just very politically motivated. And then there are some people who are just really concerned and they're hearing a lot of things and they don't understand it. So recognizing the difference between those two and just, you know, putting those listening ears on and, and trying to engage when you can tell the difference between someone who has an actual concern versus someone who just wants to, you know, rail against certain things. Yeah, I agree. Um, and if I could just expand on some things that Tiffany said, um, I think one thing is about staying focused. Um, and one of the things that I have pride myself in doing is understanding what our shared vision is, understand uh, what are some of the weaknesses and threats in our um, environment and our climate, and then being able to have that as the platform um, of conversation, trying to steer away um, from some of the things that are heavily um, political. Um, I think one advantage that I do have is being a newbie and a novice person to the environment is that I don't bring um, some of those biases to the table that are normally there. Um, and I've started to embrace certain things. I've started to strategically embrace that, you know, Pickington has um, this legacy. And I always talk about, it's not that we're talking about them doing something wrong. I'm just talking about strengthening um, the structures and the policies and the procedures. And I always speak about how our district has grown so fast. Um, we're 10,700 10, students. And so therefore, I believe that our structures and our policies and procedures have not grown with that climate and that culture. And so that we need to start defining things. And when we talk about critical race theory, I always talk about it from the perspective of it is a house bill. And one thing about house bills is they're not laws. And so therefore, uh, we need to stay focused on it when, if, it, if and when it becomes law. Um, how do we define it for our climate? How do we find it for our culture? Because that is something that we have failed to do. Um, we have huge communication um, challenges in our district. And again, I try to find things that unite us um, and ways to um, keep us on that shared vision. And I think that, that has been the most successful. Um, it doesn't matter uh, of the color, it doesn't matter of the age, it doesn't matter of, of the multitude of things that keep us apart. It's those things. And typically I can get a amen and a shaking of the head and things like that. And so when I know that we're on that way and we've gone down that pathway, I continue on that pathway to keep people engaged. Thanks, Vanessa. That um, I think I think both you and Tiffany hit on really important points for us to just elevate above and start to listen to each other. Um, and and I'm bringing my last question here to Lindsay and to Beth. Um, you both mentioned in the early part of um, introducing yourselves, kind of unique characteristics about your races. Lindsay, you said that there's only one woman currently. Um, serving on school board. And Beth, you said you happen to be the fourth woman ever to serve um, in these races. What, what perspective do you think, are you hoping to bring um, from, from the woman's perspective? What are you hoping to really showcase um, in your community? What makes it, what, what do you, what does the women's voice need to be heard? Why does the women's voice need to be heard in your community? That's a hard one, I know. I see Lindsay like, hmm. <laughs> Well, I, I can jump in a little bit. Um, 
I really think, and somebody else said this before, that women know how to work together to get things done. And one of the things that I have found, um, actually one of the best things about doing this work is meeting so many different people in the community that I didn't know before. But when I started the campaign four years ago and then having um, progressed now to my reelection campaign and having having strong connections with folks that I can get things done. I don't have to stand or, or sit at the, the dais and pound my fist and say, we need to do this. Um, in the background, you know, things are happening. And um, I think we have uh, that ability to do that. Plus, I, I think women tend to be, uh, have the ability to be far more organized because we have so many things to, to get done in our lives. And so, um, you know, I, I think that's, um, that's one of our strengths and we help each other. Um, there are two women on council with me right now and um, they've both been great mentors to me um, one to i always joke because she's leaving uh, uh she's not running again but um that she was definitely my mentor the first day showed me how to turn on the microphone um and so uh from that period on and then working with women who are also running like um, all of you um, Melanie and I uh, met on the campaign trail the, the first time around and we continue to talk and share ideas and we have a little group of uh, of women that um, we exchange emails and things so um, you know I think all of that collaborative uh, energy and spirit really uh, helps move things forward and, and gets things done. I would um, absolutely echo off of Beth. I think that as women, we uh, we wear a lot of hats and I think that we are able to look at things in a different light, uh, which is necessary, especially for school board and especially in the climate that we're in right now. Um, we have one school board member that is a female and she's up for reelection and um, we need new voices. She's been there for 16 years. Um, I do have three kids in the district and Tiffany does have three kids actively in the district. And I think, you know, lots can evolve over time. And I think that we need relevant voices that actually have kids sitting in our districts right now. So we can really um, understand from that perspective, but um, women can work together. Women can multitask. And honestly, my campaign would be nothing without the women that have held my hand and surrounded me. You asked that earlier, how have women kind of helped and been a part of that? Um, if you took away the women, I would be just here by myself. Uh, I can't thank Dublin Area Progressives, uh, Positively Blue, Tiffany De Silva, uh, Kelly Davis, Ashmary Hawk, all running, you know, as candidates as well. Uh, you know, people have spoken to the point, you know, where some days it's like hard to pick yourself up off the ground and it's women who inspire us to keep moving, even when it is hard. And we need these, you know, not all of us are mothers, but we still have nurturing voices, um, that is necessary in this climate to be able to listen and to hear, uh, really hear what people in our communities are saying. Um, it is a perspective that is absolutely needed to be able to move us in a different direction, one that we are working together. Um, it really brings a lot to the table. Well, I can't think of a better way to end our time together, our question and answer period and our time hearing about all of your um, all of your campaigns and all of the stances that you're taking out there, the hard work that you're doing, then Lindsay's own words, right? My campaign would be nothing without the women um, who surround me. Um, and so when we think about the women who surround us, obviously I'm here to talk about the Matriots, please out there in the Facebook world and out there, those who listen to, um, to this presentation this evening, this discussion, please join the Matriots, um, find us on www.matriotsohio.com 
www.ohio.com. On that website, there is a link for our candidates. Um, you can learn more about our candidates. You can also then drop down in that same um, webpage and volunteer for our candidates. Um, we are thankful that you've been with us this evening and to my candidates, those who are here and those have gone off who have gone off to multitask as well. Um, thank you so much. Strong women and power strong women, says Melanie, quoting from Lindsay. I um, really appreciate you all this evening and have a wonderful night.